field. How, how was God able to veil understanding from some while revealing it to others? And I think we have to take just a moment to talk about this so that everyone understands it. Why does God veil the understanding of the future? You know there's a scripture that says that God will do nothing except he reveal it to his servants, the prophets. So he doesn't reveal it to everybody. He only re reveals it to those that walk close with him. Consequently, he, uh, he designed for this all to be couched in symbolism. The best way I know to understand this is Jesus Christ always taught in parables while he was here upon the earth. And his disciples became so frustrated with him. Why are you always speaking in these parables? Why don't you just lay it on the line? Why don't you just speak plainly? And Jesus said, I speak in parables because it is given to you to understand, but to them it is not given. Now, I'm not going to go through that entire lesson there, but let me just say this. God casts the prophecy of the Bible in symbols so that only those that seek find, only those that really have a hunger will get it. And you're going to see that it's not that difficult to understand what all of these symbols stand for. As a matter of fact, there's no doubt about it when we're finished. And so I want to take you through this step by step so that you can see the Bible tells us exactly what these beasts symbolize. Now this is the big key. Whenever symbols are used in Bible prophecy, almost without exception, later on in the chapter or in some other place in the Bible, it will actually tell you plainly what each symbol stands for. And that's the case in this incredible prophecy about the nations that will be upon the earth at the time of the second coming. Let's take a look now at different questions that we need to be able to answer in order to explain the prophecy found here in Daniel 7. Our first question is, what do these beasts symbolize? It's obviously written in symbols, so what do the beasts symbolize? And we don't have to guess. There's no guesswork involved here. Absolutely not. Not verse number 17 tells us what these beasts symbolize. Read it for us if you would, please, Eddie. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Okay. When you first read beasts, you don't think kings. So you have to go to the interpretation given to you by the Bible. These beasts are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Now there's something else we need to know. Verse 23 tells us more about what these beasts stand for. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from uh, all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. Okay, now the big key is this. Not only do beasts symbolize kings that will be on the earth at some point in time, but they also symbolize the kingdoms over which those kings will rule. So a beast in Bible prophecy always represents a kingdom along with the ruler of that kingdom or nation. So that's the first thing we know. When you see a beast in Bible prophecy, it means kingdom or the ruler of that kingdom. That's the first thing. Now, immediately, if this is a prophecy of nations, why should we care? You know, really, Eddie, um, this could have been fulfilled a thousand years ago. This prophecy is 2,600 years old. So this whole thing could have been fulfilled in 1000 A.D. And we know there's another thousand years of human history ahead of us, so maybe this prophecy won't come to pass for another 500 years. The big question is, why should we care, and does it have any relevance to us right now? We can answer that question. And in order to answer the question, we need to now go to verse number 9 of the 7th chapter. We're going to answer, ask this question, when will these nations exist? We know this is a prophecy of nations, but the big question is, when will they be upon the earth, and does it have any relevance to me right now? Listen to verse number 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Okay, Daniel sees the vision of the four kingdoms, and he said, I watched then till the thrones of these kingdoms were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Now when you say, when we say thrones, these are, these are kingdoms, they have power, they have dominion over the people, and Daniel sees these thrones, the thrones of the, of the kings, coming down. Okay, now what he's seeing throughout the Bible, there's a central teaching that mankind will be allowed to rule himself for a period of time until he can learn that he cannot rule himself. It's at that point that Jesus Christ will come and throw down the human governments of this world 
and will establish his kingdom, a kingdom that will never pass away nor ever be destroyed. And as soon as Jesus Christ is crowned king of kings, it will usher in a 1,000 year reign of peace. There will not be one war for 1,000 years. Now that's what Daniel is seeing here. He said, I watched all the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. The kingdom of God began. Now here Daniel backs up and gives us a little bit more picture of something that's going to happen immediately before the kingdom of Jesus Christ is established. Listen to it. Yep. This is verse number 11 and 12. Okay. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Okay, Daniel said, I watched until the thrones were cast down, and then he said, I beheld because of the great words which the horn spake. Let me back up and just fill in some blanks here for you. The Bible teaches right before the second coming of Jesus to establish his kingdom that there will be a world governmental system put in place. And there will be a very powerful leader that will ascend to the throne on this world government. And he will rule the world for a period of three and one half years. Now that's what Daniel is seeing here. This one world leader is known as the Antichrist and he's symbolized here by the little horn. I watched until the little horn was, was speaking these great words, I watched even till the beast was slain, his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. I've got to pause to explain something to you here and take it by faith now, we'll prove it later. The Antichrist, this one world leader, is called by several names in scripture. He's called uh, the beast, he's called the little horn, he's called the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, that wicked one, he's called by many different names in scripture. Notice here, it says, I watched the, the little horn, the Antichrist, was speaking these great words. I watched even until he was killed, his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Now that happens at the second coming of Jesus Christ. But here's the critical point. He goes on to say here in verse number 12, as concerning the rest of the beasts. Meaning the rest of the nations. Yes, because the, beasts are nations. The nations that will be on earth when he comes back and destroys the Antichrist. Yes. So he said, I watched concerning the rest of the nations. When the Antichrist was destroyed, the rest of the nations and the kings of those nations have their dominion taken away. They're going to have their power taken away because their rulership is going to be replaced by the kingdom of God. They have their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season at a time. So what's this telling us? This tells us that the second coming of Jesus Christ, at the time of the battle of Armageddon, the Antichrist will be destroyed. But other nations will be allowed to live into the kingdom of God. Their dominion taken away, but their lives will be prolonged. So they're going to populate the earth during this millennial reign, this 1,000 years of peace. They will be mortal and they will be living under the rulership of immortals. The Bible teaches that all people who are born again and are prepared for the second coming of Jesus when he comes back, that all people who are in fact prepared will be caught up to meet him in the air and they will be changed from mortal to immortal beings and that we will rule and reign as kings and priests with Jesus Christ during this era called the kingdom of God. So all the Christian principles that should rule our life now will be enforced without option during the time of the 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ. In the reign of Jesus Christ, people will really turn one cheek uh, turn their cheek when they're hit on one side, they will in, in fact turn the other cheek. People will in fact do good in response to evil. So if someone hurts you, you will do good back to them. All of the teachings of Jesus Christ will be in place and that explains why there will be no war on the earth for the next 1,000 years. Now, the salient issue is this. If all of these beasts are on the earth at the second coming of Jesus Christ, and that's what this tells us, if the Antichrist is destroyed in the second coming, that's the fourth beast, and the other beasts are allowed to live into the millennium, that tells us then that all of these nations are going to be on the earth at the time of the second coming. Now, Eddie, this is where it starts getting really exciting because if we can prove that all these nations are on the earth right now, then we can prove that we're in the era of the second coming, and that's exactly what we intend to do. 